welcome back to another installment patio slip podcast episode 141 right yeah 141 in the building anthony here we get nate we get tony or is it nathaniel are you going by nathaniel tonight <laughs> yeah according to senate he exposed no, me suppose. No, suppose. oh suppose it exposed me Expose, um, expose me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hovering over your your name on the Zoom right now, and yes, it is Nathaniel. <laughs> At least you didn't drop a last name in there. You'd have or a birthday, like he's tried to do in the past. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording on this date, and it happens to be my birthday. Is what he wants to say. Yeah. Yeah. My social security number is no. <laughs> now we're we're happy we're back we're doing what we always do i'm tony tony 2.0 i'm tony 2.0 too many tonys uh and yeah and we've uh, we're back to nerd out again because that's what we like to do on a weekly basis for 141 in a row plus a couple bonuses here and there uh, that's fucking wild boys it is wild it's surprising we've made it this far but at the same time i'm gonna say it. it's been a long time we even banned this for a while i'm gonna bring it back and say it's the best day of the week. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's been a long time. Shouldn't have left you without a yeah. dope beat to step to. Tell us, Tim. <laughs> There's been no dope beats to step to. Nope. Actually, let me ask you guys this. When we started this, did you have any visions of how many we do? I mean, no. for me, it literally never even crossed my mind. It was just like, let's just get out this next episode. Let's get out this next episode. And then all of a sudden, there was 110 of them. And you're like, holy shit, we've been doing this for two years? How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> and you're like, what have I done with my life? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's been, it was never, it never really crossed my mind. Like, where is this going to end? Or is it going to end? Or how are we going to do this? It, it, we just kind of try to get better every week and, you know, talk to cool people in the industry and talk to each other about the shit that we like. So. The fact that we're continuing to do it, I mean, we still like it. I'm happy that we get we, all the three of us to like it. It's a good question. In fact, it comes up with a lot of our interviews, right? We ask, like, did you, did you think you were going to get this big? Did you think you'd still be touring? Do you think you'd still be putting out albums? And the answer is always no. But you, for us as fans, we're like, yeah, right, dude, you knew. We can actually somewhat relate, like, well, we didn't fucking know. We just keep doing it, and it keeps getting bigger, and we keep getting amazing guests. I mean collabed on a fucking music festival like i wouldn't have ever imagined any of this shit so no it's a good point it's a good point you're right that is a theme bd of hate breed said that tucker rule of thursday was like we had no we just four dudes in a room just <laughs> seeing what would come out you know there's totally. literally no plan and the fact that anyone paid attention to those bands it's if they feel that way then it's encouraging for us you know what i mean absolutely and yeah i mean I guess the moral of the story is just keep grinding, right? I mean, it's fun to do for us. It's fun to have learned this kind of new uh, skill because, I mean, everything here is DIY. You're listening to the three people who do everything. Like, we don't have anybody running our socials. We don't have anybody editing shit. We don't have anybody, uh, you know, coming up with the graphics. We're the ones doing all that stuff, you know, promoting it. Being your own promoter, man, that's tough. It's hard out here in the streets, as Swan said before we started recording tonight. It is tough. It really is. And you, it's fun because I'm trying to think of, I was listening to some other podcasts with a, a band member and they were like, people find natural roles in the band, things mm -hmm. that interest them. And I feel like we've kind of done that, you know, with editing and visuals and promo and otherwise no one's going to listen to your stuff. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's right. gotta be you. Yeah. I think passion pays dividends. You know, we didn't know what the fuck we're doing? Actually, you know what? We still don't know what we're doing. We'll be, <laughs> let's be candid here. It's, st it's still kind of unraveling in real, in real time. Drink. Drink. But yeah, man, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a ride. And uh, we're closing out 2022. And I think that's another actually something I want to bring up is the fact that when we launched this, it was the pandemic. So it was really kind of a sidebar project. Like, well, we're all home, so we might as well fucking geek out. And now we're, the, the pandemic's essentially simmered down and we're now we're on a roll, so it's why would we slow down? So I don't think any band can relate with the fact that they built up steam during a pandemic. Maybe there is, but we haven't had them on yet. So Yeah, we'll find them. We'll find yeah. them and talk to them. All right, Nate, you want to tell us what we're doing tonight? Are you going to jump right into it again like you did last week? I love it. Jump right in, skin to skin. Shout out to the urge. <laughs> Steve's Hot Dogs. Steve's Hot Dogs, where are you at? Shout out to Steve's Hot Dogs in St. Louis, Missouri. Episode 89 guest, Steve of the <laughs> yep. Urge. You Boy. still got it. You still got it. <laughs> Man, savant of memory. Crazy. Yeah, this is a good one. Tuan came up with this one, which is really cool. It's um, one more album 
like, fuck, man, that band's great. And it was a hard stop, and out of nowhere, they dissipated. But if they had just put out one more fucking album, I think they either would still be relevant and or continue the legacy. And uh, so that's kind of, in a nutshell, what we're looking at for the segment tonight. And another spin on that is not only, like, could it be someone who's on a roll, you wish they did one more album, like, you know, you wish Rage did one in 2001. Could be now, in 2022, like, come back. Like, now's mm-hmm. the time. Look at all these nostalgia fests. Like, now's the fucking time. So that's an angle that can come in on this, too. That and it is, we're not going to, I think we made the rule. We're not going to use Rage Against the Machine <laughs> right. because that's the easy <laughs> that pop answer, especially for the three of us. Like, clearly we would love another Rage Against the Machine album. And maybe it'll happen. We're not saying that it won't, but right now like that would be the easy answer so rage is off the table only because it's too easy right but there are yeah there's a bunch of different reasons why bands could call it quits sometimes you lose a member um maybe they pass away sometimes things just don't work out for them and we feel really strongly about the music because of when it hit us it could be a bunch of different reasons or turmoil with the band but yeah we're uh we're gonna get into it right now with a couple of those but yeah it's it's a fun it's a fun one i had a little trouble doing it because it was you'd look up a band and you'd be like I think they ended around now, and you realize they they kept going, or maybe they put out two more records, and they that's why they kind of dissipated. But w- once I found a couple, I was pretty happy with the ones I picked. Sweet, so similar experiences with our re- yeah <laughs> research yep. and development or R and D here. All right, Juan, you're leading us off, man. All right, I'm I'm gonna lead off with a little with the uh, the food analogy guy here. Do you guys want the hip hop heroes? Do you want the Post hardcore darlings, do you want the regional sweethearts, not rustic, or a band a little ahead of its time? I think I know who the hip hop heroes are. Can I get the poo poo platter and get all three? <laughs> <laughs> In due time, Nate, we'll get them all. I'm sure. I'm gonna go hip hop heroes, and I'm gonna guess. Can I guess right now? Yes, and yes. I think I have them. It's Outcast. Ooh, no. Oh, really? Well, I have one of mine is Outcast, which we'll get to shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. If you want to hear tones, fast forward to five minutes from now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give us a hint. Hip hop heroes. J5 Black Alicious. Jurassic oh, Five. Oh, nice. Ooh. Did you guys have Jurassic Five? No, but that, they did cross my mind in, uh, in researching. Same. And yeah, that's a great call. Yeah, I mean,. They released Feedback in 2006. That was the last album, I think. And they broke up, right? Like, they split up after this? I think so, yeah. Or yeah. In, Indefinite Hiatus, which is, like, the same thing, right? Right, right, right. It's been, it's been 16 years. I mean, think about that. So the chance... I feel like unless you're, like, Hum, who came from the clouds with Inlet, the further along you get, the less of a chance it's going to happen, right? So I doubt it will happen, but, I mean, I'm looking at their discography now you got jurassic 5 you get quality control you get power numbers and i will say i'll go on record feedback was a bit of a fall off now's the redemption time boys come mm-hmm. back hip-hop is not a young man's game it is not at all Doesn't those guys still got it and uh i think they're older they're wiser i think they get a lot left in the tank charlie tune is still out there touring like didn't suppose just play with him yeah he was at some festival he played in maine twice this year he was at some festival down in Lebanon, which was like some weed fest. And then uh, he was at the bowling alley, Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine, maybe a right. month, like two months ago, something like that, late September, something like that. So, yeah, he's still, you know, and he's coming up through our neck of the woods, which is cool. Yeah, and I know Charlie Tuna, he tours with Ozamotli, right? Is that how he's That's right. Been? Yeah. So he's been active with them, solo stuff, like you said, down here in San Diego. J5 did play, god damn, how long? It was probably five or six years ago now. But they killed it. Like, they were still tight. Everyone was on, on board, and it looked like they... In fact, I was in the crowd thinking, like, oh, this is the rebirth of the band. They're going to get back together and put out a record. And obviously, that didn't happen. So, you know, whether the chemistry is not there or scheduling conflicts, all the normal excuses, but um, I think you're right. I mean, it's not a young man's game. Public Enemy still tours, for that matter, you know? So... Right. It's on the table for sure. But I think in terms of new music, like I feel like there'd be more demand for Jurassic five, just with the way they left it. Oh, totally. Like a public enemy, ah, man, I, I could see them not headlining big festivals, but being up there. If they 
came back with an album. They said they were going to tour on it. And, you know, it was the full crew. They just self-titled into quality control into power and numbers is so a three album good. three album run and then feedback had the dave matthew song on it right oh you beat me to it i was gonna say that yep yeah, <laughs> yeah working I just, out i think work yep. yeah. yeah i just it was a little bit of a miss for me and that's why like redemption tour baby redemption album come back we need you and there's some good songs on feedback too it's just not part of that the three album run is like where they were fucking gold like there was no no like on you un unplaced notes every verse was where it was supposed to be every beat was where it was supposed to be so many cool songs especially with the the, the size of the group to be able to pull that off the way they did for that long so fucking good yeah and actually it made me think like i wonder if the members feel the same way they must right they must have thought like oh you know it ran its course and we put out not a dud per se but something that didn't fit in that kind of perfect collection like had they had just stopped at power numbers they would have been impeccable so i wonder if that tainted their personal legacy like yeah why continue if we put out a dud that both fans and us alike feel like this isn't the best representation of what we can of our output so i just want to do charlie tuna's verse from what's golden right now but i don't have the pipes <laughs> <laughs> it's the verbal herman monster he's so oh, good. pretty good, pretty yeah. good. he's so good He's so good. Yeah, that would be good. That's a good one, Swan. I wish we get another one from them. And maybe, hey, you never know. Door's not closed, I don't think. I mean, didn't Black Star come back with an album? This year. We yeah. can, you can't listen to it unless you pay for, is it Wondery? One of those oh, podcast yeah. platforms has it. Uh, but they were, you know, they're doing, when this drops, they'll have been on SNL with mm -hmm. Chappelle like a week plus ago. So. so yeah, J5, come back, release an album, but actually allow people to hear it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to go right into Outcast or? Yeah, let's jump into it. And so, Outcast, that was my, and I, I'm not going to, we, we know it now. So, I'm not going to give you guys any hints, but they put out what? Speaker Box, The Love Below, which was essentially their last real record. They put out Idle Wild, which was part of that movie, but whatever. I, I'm not counting that. Oh, I'm counting Speaker Box, The Love Below as their last record. But that was two solo records, which we've talked about before in this podcast elsewhere. I can't remember who brought it up, but it was brought up to us. The last real Outcast record is Stankonia, right? That's 2000. And that is, you know, a banger of a record. Not that the double album wasn't great. There's some cool songs on that uh, for either, either guy, Big Boy, and, and Andre 3000. But I want to hear them back together going back and forth with verses, with sick beats, just, you know, bombs over Baghdad style get back out there let's get these guys back together they've been kind of active on twitter recently i'm not sure who that is for them but and maybe maybe that means we're gonna get them at like coachella next spring but shit man i like why not now is the perfect time for outcast to reunite give us a another classic 12 to 15 songs uh from from those two together with a real cohesive outcast record it's funny you you say that because if you asked me when like the the last real Outcast record would be, I probably would have said like like the year. I probably would have said I don't know mid two thousands. But no, when you look back, Stankoni was two thousand. Yep. Holy shit! It's a long time. Again, same time frame. If you count Ad Idlewild, it's been sixteen years since they've done a project. That's a long time. Wow. Well, that actually brings up a point that I was thinking of, kind of for J Five and Outcast alike, which is in their head or even fans alike, is it a time and place? Is that style of music special to that time and replicating it is, I'm not, I'm not going to say sell out move, but are you forcing it? And is that why it's not coming out? Is that why the output's not there? Because they're trying to revisit something that is an era that they're trying, because J5 is like fit 2000 for power numbers, fits 2002 because all hip hop in that kind of sub segment sounded mm. like that. Roots, J5, Nappy yep. Roots, all that stuff was like, you know, I don't even know. What kind of rap is that called? It's almost like a, uh, there's a certain style, right? It's like, it's kind of the precursor to, to Kanye's backpack rap. Exactly. But yeah, exactly. exactly. That's where I was going. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it's, it's like right before, it's like that. that's the logical next step would be Kanye's backpack stuff. But uh, I, I agree with you and I disagree with you at the same time, Nate, because Outkast lived in that like mid-90s world to start and they kind of flipped some of that mid-90s stuff on its head and made it theirs, but also lived in that world really well with AT Aliens and, and uh, their early stuff. And then Stankonia, there's nothing like Stankonia. Like, yeah. they are, they're just like, here's, here's what a 
rap duo can do when they want to blow everyone's mind. And they did. And they had huge song after huge song off of that. And then they put out the double record, which, because, you know, maybe there were creative differences, maybe there was, they wanted their own, you know, spotlight, any of that stuff, who knows. And those two records are really good too, but I just want one cohesive. And it's been 22 years, almost 23. So it's time. I'm kind of torn, actually, because there was a time, and there's a time in every band where there's like, a magical time where all the stars align and a lot of it has to do with like, are you getting along? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, so there's the element of, or would they be forcing it if, if they came back and I don't know, sometimes the, the moment is the moment. We t- who, who would say that with Damien, the moment was the moment Yeah. in that episode. And sometimes it does come across forced. And I think you saw that with Eminem, some of Eminem's later catalog where, He's trying to recreate like Marshall Mathers too, and some of it was good, some of it didn't hold up, you know. Right. Yeah, I I think I agree with you. I, I don't know that I necessarily want them to come back if they're forced, but I think if their time has passed, and you know, as as they always say, that the time will help heal those wounds if they've got open wounds or there was stuff with them that didn't work uh, as a, a twosome anymore. Maybe now they're over it. And if they're over it and they're, you know, full-fledged into it, I want that. I don't want it if it's going to be forced. Yeah, and I think that's the side we don't hear. If, they, if they're going to get back together and just tour, that's pretty honest, right? Even if it is a cash grab. And they did that last time, I don't even know, seven or eight years ago. I remember Andre 3000 even wore, like, these outfits rotating and had, like, little tags hanging that said, like, a price tag. He was basically saying this is for the money, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> There's some cool photos out there if you search for it, but... At the same token, those guys are so talented. Like, I can't imagine someone as talented as Andre 3000 just sitting on a couch for years not doing shit, because that guy's a lyrical genius. Well, wasn't so he it, playing the flute shame. in New York City? What was he doing? Oh, was he? Yeah, but not, not anything, like, out in the limelight like he was before. No, 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 no. And yeah. I don't understand that. Like, he was in movies. Like, guy is a talented dude. And they both are. They're both talented dudes. Like let's let's uh, let's find something where you guys can be out and doing it again. And if that's Outcast under the Outcast banner, like I'm all for it, for that. And I think that's the punchline here is is I'm all for it. You know, in the same way I'm all here for J Five. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'd put out junk. You know, given the impeccable catalog they'd be touching, like you know they'd bring it. Exactly, and I think there's a perfectionist element there, which is the hesitation, which is Andre Three Thousand and even Big Boy, for that matter. It's Trent Reznor level. Uh, it's not 12 out of 10, so it's not, going, it's not coming out. Sorry. And we all suffer for that reason. Yeah, good point. All right, well, hey, maybe it'll happen. Maybe they'll hear this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to tag them, so <laughs> maybe they'll hear it. Right, exactly. All right, Nate, what do you got, man? So keeping the hip-hop train going, and in the realm of... Sick New World Festival and uh, When We Were Young Festival. You're right. Jurassic 5 and Outcast would be like the two headliners right there. And The Roots. I feel like those three would be like the, the big names on that kind of festival and be the ultimate with a bunch of smaller bands. And one of those smaller bands, even maybe second tier, would be this band, which I've, I think I've talked about on here. I know I've talked about it with you guys. So I get a little confused with our group text and what's that out to the world and the different nerd level. But this one... Um, I ride for both records, mainly the first one, but similar to the last two bands you just mentioned, Perfectionist, Timeless, Epic, Standalone, uh, Deltron 3030, sick. Ooh, nice. They don't do shit. So fucking good. You know, there's a few members in here, obviously, all, all doing their own thing. Del, the funky homo, homo sapien, he just actually did some shows with the gorillas recently and just killed it. He was on stage just slaying. I'm like, he still got it. Stage presence, flow, everything's still there. And I just wonder, like, what are these guys doing when they're not doing that? Like, are they working at a pharmacy? Like, what's going on? Right. There's just so much talent just idling. And this band is, is another proof in, proof in point. So, um, yeah, the last record was Event 2 in 2013. The first one I'm referring to, obviously, was the self titled in. 2000, mm-hmm. which is when we were mm-hmm. still in high school. And I remember just thinking, this is such unique hip hop. Positive contact. So Positive good. contact. Yeah. Uh, Mastermind, obviously, timeless. Mastermind song. is absolutely amazing. Yep. I remember the first time I heard that song on Napster, I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> I was just blown away. I played it on repeat. I've got a, a first time hearing that story for you. I'll go. Go for it. Remember mini discs? 
Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> so our buddy Adam, Adam C, he we, he and I were in woodshop class as like sophomores in high school, and he brought his mini disc player, yeah, and he had Del, he had Deltron Thirty Thirties Mastermind on there, and uh-huh. I was just like, a I'm listening to this amazing like futury sounding hip hop track on this mini disc, which is futury sound. You know, the whole thing just felt yeah, like, yeah. am I living in 2025? What is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> Come to find out we're close to 2025 and it's going to not be that cool. But hey, fucking awesome. Great call, Nate. And that medium died after like, what, 12 months? Yeah, it wasn't feasible. <laughs> it's very rare, though. <laughs> yeah. If you can find, this is a pro tip. This is, this is what you get when you listen to us. If you find any <laughs> mini discs, even uh, re-recordable ones, they're worth money. Even used ones. Really? Yep. Interesting. Interesting. Yep. Well, hey, it's also funny. We're 141 episodes in, and no mini disc stories had come up until this point. <laughs> I have another mini disc story. You want to hear it? Yes. yes. Tangent. Let's go. I would say this was probably in the last decade, 100% in the last decade. I was at a yard sale in South Portland, and uh, there was a brand new Sony mini disc player in the package. Unheard oh, of. Wow. Ooh. Total dead stock. I bought it and sold it on eBay. I bought it for like 10 bucks. I sold it on eBay for like 200 Wow. wow. Yeah. You weren't, you weren't in my woodshop class, Twan, were you? No. Okay. I didn't think you were, but Adam C was. He's a big hip hop head. That's crazy. You sold that for two, 10 bucks. They, they didn't know what they had. Obviously. They didn't know what they had. Yeah. And yeah. And if you can get, because actually some artists, I think like Bruce Springsteen, he had some records on mini disc. If you can get those like sealed, fourth bank. Oh, yeah. Oh, makes sense. Because I remember back in our day, Leechmere into Best Buy, they had them for sale. I remember looking at them being like, well, I don't have a player, so I'm not going to buy it. But it is cool that it's so small. You know, this is pre MP3s, and it just seemed like I always wanted something like more compact. So I was like, that might be a good pivot, but I got CDs. So this has been the uh, Patio Slave side hustle hour. (laughs) (laughs) Gary V uh, brought to you (laughs) side hustle slash dead stock slash you guys are fucking old hour. We are yeah. old, super old. But yeah, Deltron 3030, comprising of Dan the Automator, Del the Funky Homo Sapien, and Kid Koala. Timeless artists and just don't really do much. But I feel like, you know, they're on like a decade cadence, so they could put out another record. And, you know, if J5 gets back together and uh, Outcast get back together, they'd be remiss to not take that opportunity. And that aside, they should just fucking do it, right? So. No, totally. And for those of you who don't know Deltron 3030, when Nate mentioned uh, Dell going on tour with the Gorillas or playing some shows with Gorillas, if you've heard Clint Eastwood, you've heard him. So that that is the voice that is rapping throughout the major breakthrough for the Gorillas. I'm sure you've heard that song. Yeah, it's one of those MCs that just has like this really insane, immaculate vocabulary where you're like, wow, this guy must just study it encyclopedia and dictionary like at night or something because it's just well, and nobody sounds like him either yeah he's unique for sure yeah that's a good call man hip-hop out the gate yeah <laughs> man not, now i gotta revisit deltron because i haven't like nate you brought them up in the life of this podcast i don't think i revisited them so it's been a long ass time mm-hmm. yeah i gotta do that too twan what do you got number two <sighs> all right do you guys want so i brought a few to the table um Post hardcore darlings, regional sweethearts, or band ahead of their time. Post hardcore darlings. That's my vote. Nate, what do you think? Yeah, I second that. Finch. You motherfucker. <laughs> <It's been done. laughs> like, is it just me or have I, we talked Finch like a lot lately? I've just, we I've have. Been, I've been on a Finch kick, and it's one of those bands that's like, almost like a glass jaw where it's like, we wish we got more out of them. And of course, mm-hmm. glass jaw came back with, um, material control. Material control. Yep. Yeah. So we got stuff from them, but, and we did get stuff from Finch, right? Back to oblivion came out in 2014, but man, I, I, I would love to see them come back, reunite, do a tour, do an album. And if it was closer to what it is to burn or, what was the one after that? Say hello to sunshine. That was a little more yeah, chaotic. Say hello to sunshine. Yep. Something, honestly, if it pulled from every one of their releases, I would be so happy. And I think there's a big demand for this for them. I've seen more about them online like lately than I think I've ever have. And nostalgia's in. We keep saying that. Like they would crush if they reignited that flame. 
Totally. And and like there was a was it a ten year anniversary that they did for what it is to burn where they did a, a, a run of shows and they, they pressed it to like vinyl and it's a, it's it's digital. You can find the live version of it digitally. I feel like it's the ten year, which would be what, twenty twelve? Yeah. So that's ten years now. It's twenty now. So holy shit, like yeah, I, I'd be all in on them figuring out old the old finch the early finch sound again like that i fucking wore out what it is to burn i I bought that on cd the day it came out i put it in my headphones and i would like walk around school and just listen to it fuck man that that's my fondest memory of just that cd player went or that cd went from my cd player to my car cd player back to my cd player it didn't like leave my side for a month I listen to it all the fucking time. So, yeah, I'm down. I'm ready. Let's let's get those guys back together. Let's do something big. Yeah, you're dating us again. So basically, you were in study hall. You had it in the disc, man. Went to the right. CD deck in the car that you installed <laughs> yeah. yourself. To the I didn't home. install it myself. My buddy Adam did different Adam, who I used to work with at the shoe store that I worked at. He, if I gave him twenty bucks and he put it in for me. It was awesome. He did mine too, <laughs> via your recommendation. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're playing when we were young, 2023. They were announced. They're on that lineup. So well, they what, get that there's this is demand. Right. Yeah, yeah, let's go. The Nate, yeah. you in on this? Where are you oh, at with fuck yeah. Well, here's, the, here's something that's interesting. I didn't know who this band was, similar to many bands that you bring to the table on the podcast. Circa 2002, but you said check out this band. I think you passed me the CD, probably in a study hall. And I checked it out, and yeah, I was hooked instantly. First, like getting the stamp of, of approval from another nerd is always, you know, a step in the right direction. But, you know, giving it your own ears is, is definitely a testament. So, yeah, from the get-go. 2002. I didn't scout the band out myself, but I was hooked. And I remember thinking this is a front to back record. I remember thinking what it is to burn is like the blue album from Weezer. It's like flows perfectly. Every song's great. Every song's a sing along. The production's amazing. The artwork's amazing. Had they followed that kind of, I don't know, crescendo of storytelling, they, you know, they'd probably still be around t- to this day. But, you know, kind of like the J5 talk. Was that an era? Was that like, Mm. Nate, you know, the singer, yeah, he's super young. Drive th- drive throughs in its prime. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, drive throughs yeah. in its prime. I mean, that was like the hype back then. I mean, we were a part of it because we were that age group. So it makes perfect sense. We were like the perfect consumer for that. But it was honest. And that's why I loved it. And it's why we still love it today because it wasn't forced. And I think that's why there might be hesitation from these bands is, it has, is the hesitation, the fact that it would be forced because it's not a true representation of what the band is given how old they are. I mean, could we put out albums today talking about that subject matter today and be honest about it? Not really, but you could probably, you know, change it to focus in on, you know, today. Yeah, that, that's a really good point, Nate, because you're right. That stuff all is of a time and a place, and, and not just the, you know, being on drive through it's 2002 or whatever. The lyrical content of that music, the angst that goes with that music is of an age. Like we, it hit us because we were 16, 17 years old and it worked for them because they were 21, 22 and probably wrote it when they were 16, 17 years old. So trying to do that when you're 45, right. your world has changed probably 15 times in the, in the time frame since that came out and today, you know, you've had to roll with life's punches as we all do. Not everybody can continue to turn that into music or art and that's tough. And that's why anybody that lasts you know, any longer than five or 10 years and continues to do what they do is, there's a testament to those folks because you've got to change what you do. You can't just be the same thing over and over and over again because it does fall flat as you age or as you, you know, like no one's, you know, they're not writing stay with me at 50. You right. know what I mean? It doesn't, just doesn't fit the same. Not that it's a, be bad at 50. It just doesn't fit the same. One last uh, little story. This will take 30 seconds to close this out. First time I ever heard Finch. Uh, Warp Tour 2001 up in Montreal, I get handed a sampler, and it's a compilation. It's in one of those cardboard sleeves. The name of the sampler, I shit you not, I still have it. It's called After Stool Special. <laughs> and the finished track, I think Awake was on it. You have to fact check me. I will yep. probably pull it up, but uh, Awake. So that was before the album came out. And then I think I got the EP and I the mean... rest is history. After Stool Special, come on. <laughs> Nonpoint was on it too, I think. Uh, what a day, maybe? Time frame makes sense, right? Yeah. Statement yeah. would have been right around then. Yeah. Good Man, stuff. That's... Memory lane, baby. Here we are. 
pretty much every week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you one, and it, it's, uh, it fits around this time. It fits around this... Uh, it's not the same genre, but it's, uh, you know, it's a Jace, as Twan likes to say. Twan, you, get, you got me into this band via this record, and uh, how else can I... They're, one of their big songs is reference to a huge movie we've talked about on this pod with Rob back in a Perfect Songs episode. Old school? Well, this, this record came out in... Two, uh, the, the, the big record came out in 2002. The name of the song is a, a person's name, and it's about a movie that came out in the... Phoenix TX. You got it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Had to walk you through it. Phoebe Cates is the song I'm talking oh, about. Oh, man. Right? Man, I'm a stan. I'm a fucking Phoenix stan. Lechuza is so fucking good. Still holds up. Go listen to KDW right now and tell me you, you don't have <laughs> you don't have every feeling you've ever had. Tearjerker, baby. <laughs> or tearjerker. All of it. Try right? not to cry. <laughs> oh, man. And threesome. Threesome's fun too. Uh, but it's a it's a fucking great record. And they, they did kind of reunite in twenty fourteen and then they put out an EP in twenty sixteen, but like full proper record. I want it back. I want, I want everything about that record is, is really good. The Little Chooser record. There are spots that are kind of of the time and younger and in the moment, but there are songs that are not like that. And I want it. I, I think they could pull off the, as we were just saying, maturity part going into, you know, being 45 and writing songs. So Phoenix TX, final answer. I love Phoenix TX. And I liked the, it was the self title album was the one before that, right? All My Fault. I like that. Was it the Rooster song at the end? Yeah, just, you know, that was of the time, Blink-182 ask, but when Lechuza dropped, it was like, this is a full, honestly, in the same way Finch is what it is to burn. Like, it was a full album, and you're right, they, they had the jokey stuff with Threesome, but then there was, you know, some heavy metal riffs, like, was it Master of Puppets? No. P Pasture of Muppets. Pasture of Muppets, yeah. I mean, so they, <laughs> they lived in both worlds, right? And El Baracho at the end. El Baracho is so fucking good. That, man, I, I don't know where I'd place them in my all-time favorite bands or albums, but Lechuza, straight up, top 25 out, maybe top... It's so good. Maybe top 50, 25, 50 albums for me all time. Like, it's, it's that wow. good. Yeah, I rode for them, and I still do ride for them so hard. That record's still good now, too. So, like, it's, it's go, go listen to it right, right this second. So, a question on that reu reunion that they did, what did you say, 10 years ago or so? Uh, yeah, 14, it looks like, and then uh, put out an EP called Creep, which is like CRE period EP. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, like, not much sense musically. They did have a former member from 06 to 09, which surprised me in doing my research. It's a drummer who has also worked with Nine Inch Nails and Angels and Airwaves. Oh, Alon? Alon, yeah. yeah. Alon Rubin, yep. Mm -hmm. Which I was surprised by. Like, I didn't know that he was with them for any stretch, but... Well, one of the guys in uh, Unwritten Law is... One of the guys from Phoenix, Texas in Unwritten Law now, I think. Oh, well, I mean, there's a bunch of people in Unwritten Law over the years. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's true. Uh, we talked to Scott Russo way back on episode 11. Go check that Go out. Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I ask is, is for that reason alone, and it's exactly where I was going, is... We want these bands to put out another output because of the memories we have associated with these records that are, according to you, Tuan, in the top 25 to 50, which is a high rank considering all the music we listen to. Like that's It's bold. No, I know it's bold. It's bold. But it, no, but, it, but, but it's, it's time a, and place. It's, you're it's right. It's time and place. But I'm just wondering, like, is it even possible if the original lineup isn't intact? You no. Know, if it's just the singer, right? So Finch, for instance, I think it's just Nate, right? So No, no, I don't think so. Oh, is, is, there, is there more members? I'm just thinking, I'm just speaking candidly, like, can they even replicate anything close if the, the original lineup is I mean, not even on speaking terms for that matter? Yeah, I think with some bands, that's the case. I think with going back to Finch, I think there's quite a few original OGs with uh, Phoenix. I'm not sure. I think there's less, less OGs. Yeah, there's less, but there are, there are still current members. Yeah, Damon. Yep, they're still doing all right. Great pick, man. Like that, I'm shocked I, that didn't come up in my thoughts i thought for sure in doing the research that i was going to find that they had a bunch of music and i just didn't know about it and mm. i was like oh man the last full length was lechuza i fucking love that record how did i like forget that they were a thing 
We have a good friend that has the Lechuza eye as a tattoo. Really? Nice. Ian. Ian has that? No shit. It's had it for almost oh, 15 years, maybe? 20 maybe years? Maybe he'll listen to the episode because we're talking about him. <laughs> there you go. Is that the cover where he's in like the little like go-kart or box car on, on the, the bike? On the bike. Yeah. Yep. yeah. In the cake. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Great so many cover. good songs. Yep. All right. Nate, you're up. Nice. All right. So this one, sim- so I was like scouring bands like and came across a bunch that like actually... <laughs> To your point, had reunited and put out outputs that I didn't even fucking know about. Yeah, like, oh, they're wow. wondering where your ass is, Nate. They've been <laughs> kicking for years. They're yeah, right? like, <laughs> they've, they've been touring, putting out records, and I'm like, yeah, missed me. Bad promotion. It's not my fault. <laughs> but this one is a hard stop and uh, pretty notorious for it. They disbanded. In fact, I saw them on their last tour in 2007 in New York City. I uh, thought it was going to be the... A new stretch of them putting out records and touring, but no, it was it was the end of the end of all things to come for this band. So um sad but true. Any any guesses? <laughs> Keeping it vague. End of all things to come, sad yeah. but true. I know, is it Metallica? Is what, it what Monday? Say? Like what do we do? <laughs> Will they renegades too? Like what do you say? <laughs> Nate, we told you no rage. I got nothing. It's a nineties OG. I figured. Australian OG. Australian OG. ACDC. No. There's not many, so you can <laughs> narrow it down. John Butler Trio. <laughs> no, but they did, They should put out a new record. Uh, Silver Chair. Oh, oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, first, first record, Frog Stomp in 1995. We were young bucks, fucking middle school. Or no, elementary school for that matter. Yeah, I'm going to expose us. <laughs> <laughs> When's your birthday again, mate? <laughs> <laughs> They were on a pretty strong cadence. 95, Frog Stomp, Freak Show, 97, Neon Ballroom, 99. Diorama. Diorama, 2002. And then Young Moderns, when I saw them on tour in New York City in 2007, I was like, this is fucking rad. Playing a small, they're playing Webster Hall, which is kind of an iconic venue. And thinking, I can't believe I'm seeing Silverchair, first of all. Secondly, they hadn't been around in a long time, so this might be, you know, the beginning or the rebirth of this band to, to continue going forward. But no, they, they played their set. They actually only played shit from Young Modern. They didn't play anything off Frog Stomp. Mm-hmm. They didn't play anything off most of the records wow. before that, which I thought was, I think me and all the fans in the crowd were like, what the fuck? Who the fuck do they think they are? <laughs> we're here for Frog Stomp. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the band's not kind of notorious for being out of the spotlight. Daniel, the singer, has had some serious issues. Um, Health wise, anorexia, kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. Things he wrote, like he that. wrote a song about it. I mean, it, it's not, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's not, and you know, anything that's not public or anything like that. But I know that they're strong in every possible way, musically, lyrically, especially. Frog Stump obviously kind of flows into that whole grunge scene really well. I mean, they put up that record when they were like 15, yeah, which is incredible young. when you think about like an album that he's only 43 right now, right? Yeah, he's, he's, still not, young. he's not much older than us, right? <laughs> Crazy. But yeah, they dropped that album in uh, 2007, disbanded in 2011, and uh, they just haven't done shit since. And they've publicly said that they're done for good. You know, it's one of those bands that puts a stamp on it and says, no, it'll never happen. And it sucks, because I think that there's a lot of talent there that's just idling for no reason. And uh, I know the singer, he does a podcast, so I think that's kind of, that occupies most of his time, Daniel. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. You say idling for no reason. There might be a reason. We just don't know. Yeah, it. true, uh, true. Yeah. You're right. I mean, they were, they're probably underrated at this point, too, as far as bands go. Uh, people don't realize how, how talented they were and how young they were when they started, uh, you know, and, and the way that they kind of ascended so, so quickly at such a young age with, you know, with Frog Stomp and then continue to be, you know, relevant through the next five or ten years, so. Good pull. I, I hadn't thought of that band in so long, and it's not because I don't like them. It just it's another one of those things. Just so much music and so much pulling at you. I wish I I'm gonna have to go, go revisit because there's some really good songs in that catalog. I'm with you. This is a band that I never think to listen to. I had Frog Stomp. I had Freak Show. Neon Ballroom was after that. What was that single off Neon Ballroom? Anthem for the year 2000. Oh, great. So fucking good. Wow. Sludgy. I am going to listen to that when we, I was going to say when we hang up. When we hang so up good. this call. <laughs> I'm going to hang up on you right now and go listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow, that's a that honestly could be my favorite song of theirs. It, it's up there, and that's saying something because there are other really good songs. Like Frog Stomp is pretty much front to back. Pure it's Massacre, front, right? Yeah. Pure Massacre. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, especially for if you think about again, it's such a feat that they were that young to put out that record. But that song, Anthem for the, for the Year Two Thousand, so fucking good. And then the song that he put out about you know his struggle with anorexia is is really it's it's well done. It's it's sad. It, pulls at you but it's also you know it's a, a moving piece of music like they had a ton of talent all right guys i'm gonna put you guys on the spot what's a better 2000s anthem anthem for the year 2000 or <laughs> youth of the nation by pod Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know they both are so fucking good where do we go a year younger and say prince 1999 party like it's 1999 <laughs> <laughs> Millennium. will smith just <laughs> Uh, all right. Good, good pull, man. I like that one. All right, boys. Round three. Do you want the regional sweethearts or the band that was a little ahead of their time? Ahead of their time. Ahead of their time. So the sweethearts, regional sweethearts, was Silent Majority. Ooh, Love to see yep. another album from them. But we're going to go ahead of their time. I'm going with Title Fight. Title Fight started as hardcore punk band more probably on the punk side by the time they finished they were in that kind of pseudo shoegazy subdued vocals basically the direction that citizen went in mm -hmm. turnover went in ceremony actually might have beat title fight to the punch but um they kind of spearheaded that so the reason i picked them is one i love them but two what era title fight would we get would we get like the floral green or was it shed? Yeah, 2011 yeah. shed was so yeah. fucking good. Forget the one before that. Last thing you forget, maybe. Or would we, or would we get Hyperview, you know, which was really kind of a droney, subdued vocals? Like, I don't know. I'm in, but people would come out for them. People want this big time. I know they'll come out because I didn't know who this band was until you brought it to the table on the podcast. And now I'm a fan. So I'm like, there's a lot of FOMO. Like, you know, making up for lost time. So if they were reunited for a tour, one, for a record, two, I would be there for sure. You know, I would be like a secondary fan, but I would be there for all in, you know. Uh, it's funny. I was looking at Twitter the other day and somebody had taken the Taylor Swift announcement, tour announcement poster and added title fight to it. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's fucking <laughs> I was like, I, I got to like this. I'll find it and send it to you guys. It was just like all, it's like Paramore, you know, the bands that are going on tour, playing shows with, with Taylor, and then title fight just to the top of the list. I was like, fuck yeah, I'd go to that. that. That sounds like a blast. Damn. Yeah, they if they did a, like a one reunion show, it would probably... I don't know. I bet they could pull 8,000 people, six to 8,000 people. If they did a tour, they'd probably be in the, you know, two to 3,000 a night type of thing. But I only got to see them once. They played Bane's last show at the Palladium back in 2016. Wow. And uh, they were great. But uh, that was like near the end. That was like right at the end. They haven't done anything show wise since I think probably the Hyperview support stuff, which was 2016, whatever it was. See, I thought they were still active, so this is enlightening to me. Yeah, I, I, w I wish they were, because Hyperview was different. People weren't ready for Hyperview, but it's one of those that, like, now that that's in, over the last few years, people have, like, put that in pretty yeah. high regard, and I, I liked it. Yep. And you're right, ahead of their time when it comes to that stuff. And shit, like, there's so much good music out there, and... When you find something that you like or that's yours, that like, I, Twan, I know you've written for this band for a long time because we've talked about them pre pod. It, it's been a band that you've had t shirts or, you know, you're mm -hmm. wearing a, you got a koozie, whatever. You've always got something like nerdery wise because that's, we were, we were those people before the podcast. But when you find that band and then they fucking disappear, man, oh, it's just, it's, it's gut wrenching. Tough. It's <laughs> tough because, yeah. Again, this is another time, and we say that all the time, time and place. Like, I remember getting into Shed. I was, it was the Shed era that I got into them. I remember that era. I remember Floral Green. And yeah, would a new album recapture that? Probably not, but I'm, like we said, I'm here for it. So, Yeah, that is, that is a tough hang, especially when a band has runway. It's not like they're, you know, kind of 
stuck in time for like a certain style of music. They have that versatility to to branch out. So there's really no reason, well, like you said earlier, there's no reason that we know about that they can't continue on. So yeah, it's it's soul crushing. There's no closure, right? As a fan, there's no closure. It's just like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I know. How, how selfish are we? We're selfish. Fucks. Oh, we're so selfish, dude. Amazing. Give me more music. <laughs> Give me more music. I, I will pay you money. <laughs> yeah, we'll money. pay for it. Yeah, we'll pay for it. <laughs> That's a good one. Yep. Yeah. Let's keep it rolling. I've got one that we've talked about, and I've got one that obviously can't happen because the person has passed on. Which one do you want? Let's do... Tell us who the pass on yeah, one is and then do the it. other we'll one. We'll keep it light. Elliot Smith. Oh, Elliot yeah. Smith. Yeah, I mean, I, I fucking love Elliot Smith. I listened to a ton of Elliot Smith in college. Uh, you know, we all have our phases where we're, we're down and things don't work out for you the way that they want as you're growing up and his music was often a break for me and to help me kind of through that stuff. And, and I had friends that were also big into him and we, we just, we'd sit around and listen to it from a basement on a hill or uh, either or, or, you know, just great talent, played all the instruments on, on the stuff that he put, put out, gone too soon, you know, just great, great music, Good great pick. musician. The other one is what we've talked about in the past is the hotel year. Oh, nice. Yeah, and Christian just going full poker player, and they've played a couple of shows, but they haven't put anything out since Goodness in, tw- I want to say 2016, too. So, Goodness was so fucking good, and Home Like No Place Is There is also so fucking good, and even the first record is, is really good, even though it's not in the same vein as the other two. They were part of, you know, one of the 75 emo revivals over the last five years, ten years. I fucking love the hotel year. I love those last two records so, so, so much. I would fucking kill for another record from those guys. So yeah, the hotel year. The uh, home, like no places there. I recently, in the last few days, saw that album on a list of top twenty emo records of the twenty uh, what twenty first century. Hmm. Yep. And I remember I kept scrolling. I saw this, and I was like, I remember Tone got us into them. Oh, so good, man. No, Nate still has Nate still hasn't listened, but yeah. <laughs> no, I have, and that's what I was gonna say. It's another bandwagon thing for me. Like I didn't know who they were. He brought it up. I checked it out, and I was stoked. And I was like, Yeah, it'd be great if they came through. Because I have shit on my calendar, like <laughs> that I probably can't see, that are coming through here that I would have never put on my calendar before. You guys mentioned it, and now I'm like, I'm gonna go check it out because now I know the music. I'm familiar with it. So similar to that, it sucks. You know, being a bandwagon fan, I wasn't there in the time, and it's now or never. And you got to think we had. We were talking with what Spose recently on the economics of touring. Is that another reason? You know, it's just a hypothetical question. Like, are these artists, is it never going to happen because now it's next to impossible? Slash, the guy's a professional poker player. Is he going to stay in a, you know, five star hotel or is he going to jump in a Econa van and play small venues and pay for his own food? Like, you know, there's a, it's a tough sell. So I think, and that, that's a good point, but I think. If you're trying to get back in and just do the music thing and be a touring musician and play, put music out and that's your gig, that is hard and a tough sell for somebody who's probably done it for a while and left it. Brandon said to us, Brandon Shapati of uh, Bleeding Through said to us at Touch of the Earth, hell, if they're going to you know, fly me out to play a, a festival here and there around the country, I mean- I'm fucking in. So, like, if we can get more of the, the when we were youngs and stuff like that yeah. to have bands like the Hotel Year come back or Finch come back, maybe there's a little bit more of an avenue for that. And, and maybe we get a song or a record out of it. Who knows? Yeah. They used to tour with uh, Title Fight. So maybe you get, you get to remember at that. I mean, I, I think these bands are right now, the members are probably in their early 30s, early to mid 30s. So you get to remember when, they're, when they called it quits was probably at a time in their life where it's like, Shit or get off the pot. Like yeah, right. it's either gonna happen or it's not gonna happen. And uh the thing about these bands not being active is it has increased the demand. And it's really why we're talking about them. So yep. they can do the festival stuff, you know, and it would hit. A new album would hit if it's good, you know? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, it's true. There's a rarity aspect there. And then the metrics need to stack up. So we need to bring the metrics for bands like this to to surface for you know, the bookings on festivals like that. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> so this one, um, God damn, I, I can't remember how young we were. It's definitely middle school. And I remember thinking... So wait, when we were young? <laughs> yes, when we were young. <laughs> All right, sorry. Sorry, dad jokes are over. In fact, this could fit into like a whole different festival of this ilk of uh, music. But um, 
And I remember talking about this band in particular with former guest Rob. I don't know what episodes. What do we got? Don't. It's like four or five. Uh, 96, 17, and what was the third one? What was the perfect, the last perfect songs? 111? No, more than that. 130. 130 something, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anything. Shameless plug, but regardless. (laughs) Me and him had talked about this band at length because he had done some kind of deep dive nerdery on what the hell's going on with this band. They're amazing. The record's solid. Uh, But they disbanded after one fucking album. And, and, the new radicals. Oh, you knew who it was? How the fuck did you know? Oh, I was just, I was, just, I was kind of joking. I remember oh, Rob shit. guessed new radicals when I was given the eagle eye cherry spiel. Oh, <laughs> and isn't it one guy? Isn't that what Rob was saying? Yeah, it's, yeah, yes, it's new radicals. Uh, maybe you've been brainwashed too. It came out in uh, 1998. Solid fucking record. It's a hybrid of like third eye blind and like U2. Like, there's amazing harmonies, instrumentals are amazing, songwriting's. Perfect. I remember listening to this record relentlessly in my disc man back in the day and thinking, and at school dances the whole nine, thinking this record's fucking so cool. And I was a huge U2 fan, but I remember thinking like, this guy sounds exactly like Bono. Great voice. But the, the point I wanted to make earlier about Rob is he had done some kind of research and realized that the singer had even put out to the press, his whole goal was to put out one record and have it hit number one on the charts, and then he was going to call it quits. Like, that was, like, his goal. <laughs> he put it out to the universe. He actually did it, and he pulled the plug. That's amazing. Which is kind of phenomenal. And so they haven't done shit. Definitely haven't put out any more music. But they did reunite one time in 2021 for the presidential entrance for Biden. And that was it. It was a one-off. But that shows that if he was invited to that, that there's obviously some kind of demand. Yeah, because that, that's not even a big, like, it's a big deal, but it's like, that's the thing that got him out of hibernation? <laughs> well, it's a unique, it's a unique demand, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, you're going to take that over whatever, Coachella or anything, you know, when we were young. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, disbanded in 1999, haven't done anything since. And uh, the only member in the band was the his sole songwriter, Greg Alexander. Just does his own thing, but he set up that goal. Like, I'm going to put out an album, one single, get to the charts, number one on Billboard, and I'll, I'll pull the plug. And he actually did it, which is kind of phenomenal. Yeah, 22 years. That's like hum level commitment yeah. to, to sitting on the bench, you know? <laughs> That's wild. And, I mean, we're talking about uh, the, the, the major song on that one. Only Get What You Give. Yeah, You Only Get What You Give. And it's fucking uh, a great fucking song. And he, like, shits on a bunch of people in the pop music <laughs> world in the fucking song. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. N- knowing that backstory now, it makes a little more sense. Yeah, I actually did some reading on that. He's like, there's some interviews where he said he like had, a, had to apologize to like members that he had blasted on that song and basically told all these people like, hey, it wasn't supposed to be anything personal. It was really supposed to reference the time and place of the song coming out, which is kind of, you know, makes sense. But he did, he actually did highlight like hey it's no knock on you actually it's really just a lyric yeah well it's funny you say that because that's one of those things that you would put out in a song that you didn't think would be big exactly but he clearly thought it would yeah. be big yeah he was trying to make it big so he's like hey maybe that's what we do we just start flailing and talking <laughs> shit to people you come around we'll kick your ass in <laughs> and then someday we'll know that was the other yeah. one right yeah good good pull i i did not think that one I, my my thought was something different, so I'll save that for another time because it might work. Save it, but also listen to this record front to back. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised on how solid it actually is. So, Nate, can I ask you a question not related to that pick, mm-hmm. but to a comment you made maybe 10 minutes ago? You said that based on recommendations from us, you put concerts in your phone based on bands we recommended. Well, you sent a screenshot in our group text the other day. And I saw the Menzingers was a, you had them in your phone. Yes. So let me ask you, was that in there for a while? Or did you just put it in before you <laughs> took that screen grab? <laughs> just to satisfy Great us. question. No, uh, scrolling through Ticketmaster, all the multiple sites that show what shows are coming through. And yeah, added it months ago. And so it populated recently. I'm like, oh, that's coming up. But <laughs> good, nice. good question though. Yeah, it wasn't a gotcha. <laughs> Nate's like, oh, I'll put this in there just to appease those two guys. <laughs> it's Nate's version of two truths and a lie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He puts like title fight in there to like, <laughs> does Nate know something? I don't know. Yeah, title fight's touring? <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, good point. Good call. 
shit. Well, that was that was fun, boys. I'm excited to do that again down the road because we totally can. Although it does take more research than we thought because sometimes those bands actually do <laughs> did stick around for three or four records and just kind of fell off for us. But in this case, th- these were these were good ones. This was fun. And hey, maybe some members might hear this and they might say, "Hey, there is a demand, and we're in." So, yep, a demand of three. And whoever's listening. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody that's listening. So Chip, <laughs> Sean and Seth, uh, Andrew, uh, if you guys want to you know, tweet at those people or, or Instagram at those people, do it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Good night. I think we're, uh, I wasn't saying good night, but I'm saying. Good, good night to you as well, Anthony. Tonight was a good night for the podcast. Yeah. yeah, I'm in. Let's get albums from all those guys. And what, are we out? We're out. Peace, potheads. We're out for now. Peace. The end for now. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Patio Slave. We are at Patio Slave on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of the places that you can find us on social media. Facebook, Patio Slave Podcast. YouTube, Patio Slave Podcast there. Email us at Podcast at gmail.com. And hey, if you want to become a supporter, click on the link at the bottom of the episode and give us a dollar, give us five bucks. It keeps the lights on, keeps us going. We really appreciate that stuff. Thank you. Are you guys ready? I was born ready. <laughs> Still here, never left. <laughs> Man, bleak. Young Hova in the house. Beanie Siegel in the house. What? What? Still here, number one. Let's <laughs> <laughs> put that at the end. <laughs> yeah, you did record that. Perfect. I can put that at the end. Yeah, I can. <laughs>